Meet the 2019 Honda Passport Elite. Now, the green machine here is the newest member of Roadshow's long-term fleet and will be serving as the production vehicle for our West Coast San Francisco-based filming crew, which means I'm gonna be seeing a lot of this car over the next couple of months. So let's get to know each other, shall we? Now we were already pretty familiar with the Passport before it even showed up in our garage. And that's because a lot of its technology is shared with the rest of Honda's 2019 lineup of trucks and SUVs. We've got a separate video about that. And its platform and powertrain are largely shared with one of our previous production vehicles, Honda's Ridgeline pickup truck. That means that we're working with a 3.5 liter Earth Dreams V6 engine that makes 280 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque, which it puts through a nine-speed automatic transmission rather than the Ridgeline six-speed. And we've got this weird electronic push-button pull lever shifter to deal with, which is gonna take some getting used to. For now, I'm still accidentally putting it into reverse every time I wanna go into drive, and that's just a little bit annoying. Now front wheel drive is standard, but all wheel drive is available as an option and standard on our top trim elite model here. That's going to be Honda's so-called iVTM4 system, which uses front wheel drive for most of the time, but can on demand send up to 70% of power to the rear axle and then torque vector left and right once it's there. It's pretty interesting how this has an effect on handling, especially when you put it in a sport mode. Now from the C-Pillar forward, this vehicle is pretty much identical to Honda's Pilot SUV, which means we've got plenty of room here on the front row. 40 inches of headroom and 40 inches of legroom, which is good for our taller producers. And with 100 cubic feet of storage space with the second row folded flat, there's plenty of room for our gear, though this is a little bit of a step down from our old Mercedes Metris. We miss you, Wu-Tang Van, we really do. Now the Passport is about six inches shorter than the larger Pilot, thanks to the removal of its third row, which means our capacity for people is down to just five passengers rather than the larger Pilot's eight souls. However, the Passport is about an inch taller than the Pilot thanks to its increased ride height, which is good if we need to do some light off-roading. However, that does mean that whenever we want to lift a Pelican case, a camera bag, or a tripod into this thing, we've got to lift it just that much higher. It's a slight inconvenience. Now we've had the Passport for a while now. We put about 1,600 miles on it going to dozens of shooting locations with all of our gear. And so far we've averaged around 22.5 miles per gallon combined, which is a little bit better than the EPA's estimate of 21 miles per gallon combined for the all-wheel drive model, but still not a whole lot to write home about compared to some of the better performers in this class. Now, the 2019 Honda Passport starts at around $33,000 for the base sport with front wheel drive. But our elite model here with all wheel drive and all the bells and whistles tops out at just under forty-five dollars Now trim level for trim level, that's about one to $2,000 less expensive than a comparably equipped pilot. And if you don't need that third row, maybe smaller is better. You do get all the same equipment. First impressions are quite good, but only time will tell if we'll like this 2019 Passport as much as our previous production vehicles, the Ridgeline and the Metris van. But we've got plenty of time to figure that out, which leaves you with plenty of time to head over to theroadshow.com to check out the rest of our coverage of this vehicle, including the full rated review. But before you do, we gotta name this thing. Give us your best suggestions for a nickname for our Passport down in the comments below.